Hey what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll look at some more Twisted Punishments. But just a heads up, we're doing a slight change. Basically we're dividing the picks into different categories so that the video maintains more of a balanced tone. And even though all of the punishments we're looking at today are really messed up, some of the scenes are actually kind of cool and one of them is pretty funny. 7. Now quite a few of you have recommended this one, and rightfully so. In 7, two detectives played by Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt hunt a serial killer who's committing murders based on the 7 deadly sins. And even though we get a number of extreme kills, the movie definitely makes a very strong impression during the first few minutes by presenting perhaps the strangest one of them all. The two detectives meet in front of a house and go inside of a small, dark room to see the crime scene with the killer's latest victim. In there, there is a dead body of a morbidly obese man. It's shown that before he died, his feet were held together with barbed wire. The exact cause of death remains a mystery until an autopsy is done later on. Before the man died, the killer tied him up and forced him to stay at the table and eat so much food until he burst open. The man then kept eating until his stomach exploded. Officially, he died from internal bleeding after being kicked to the side, which acted as a catalyst for the hemorrhaging. And the interior wall was ripped open. This man ate till he burst. All of this is much worse when you see the condition of the apartment and the terrible food he ate. The apartment is infested with cockroaches and it looks like he only ate gruel, like in a prison. Gruel omelets. Nothing but gruel. It's also a very creative torture method. Awful, but creative. Something else that's very off-putting is when the doctor who did the autopsy wants to show us the man's stomach and he proceeds to pull out what looks like a stuffed grocery bag. Usually a person's stomach is supposed to be the size of your fist and can only hold about 2 liters in volume when you're full. That looks like 3 gallons. Hereditary Hereditary is a modern classic which really stood out from most other horror movies, even though the plot is eerily similar to the Paranormal Activity franchise. Here we follow a family whose life slowly begins to crumble after the grandmother's death. Already in the beginning, which takes place at a funeral, it becomes clear that she was involved with some sketchy people who are later revealed to be part of a demonic cult. And although the movie has a rather slow beginning, there are some moments that just hit like a brick. One scene in particular shocked audiences everywhere, and it's after Peter is asked to take his sister, Charlie, to a high school party with him. The mother suggested that they go together. You're going. She's going with you. Great. Horrible idea. Why? Well, during this party, Charlie eats some chocolate cake which is made with walnuts, but she has a nut allergy. Her throat starts closing up as it slowly begins to swell, but it takes her some time to realize what's happening. After a few minutes, she goes to her brother who's getting baked in the bedroom, and when he slowly understands what's happening, he drives her to the hospital. On their way, he's speeding down a road because Charlie's throat keeps getting tighter, making it harder for her to breathe. She sticks her head out the window for some fresh air, but only a few seconds later there's a dead animal on the road. Peter swerves the car to the right and Charlie's head hits a lamppost, decapitating her and she's dead instantly. Later on, we even just see her loose head on the road. This almost comes completely out of the blue, especially considering the film's slower pacing. And it feels so real. Because what happens is that Peter is just in complete shock. He is scared to even look at the back seat and eventually just continues driving, leaving his sister in the back for his mother to discover in the morning. And I think everyone can relate to this on some level. I mean, Peter's reaction. You did something bad and you come home and just sit there awaiting the consequences you will face after people inevitably find out what you did. I'm saying this because some people said that Peter's reaction is stupid, but I think it's very real for someone in shock. Friday the 13th 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Now even though this is a twisted death, it is done in a less serious horror comedy style. By the way, I've got to be honest, I haven't seen all of the Friday the 13th movies, because there are more than 10 of them. But one that I did watch specifically because of this death was Jason Takes Manhattan. You might ask where in the Jason Voorhees timeline this story fits? No. 
the plot? I don't know. There, there's like a boat, an annoying geezer, discount Shrek, doesn't matter. Basically, Jason follows a bunch of cool kids to Manhattan and goes on another killing spree. By the way, even though that's the name, it's only like the last third of the film. So one of his victims is Julius, a boxer. At one point, Jason pursues him and there's a small chase to a rooftop. When Julius ends up being trapped up there, he decides to fight Jason. Since he doesn't have a weapon, he chooses to punch him in the face. A lot. He puts up a pretty good fight, but it just doesn't do much. Jason just keeps taking the punches and doesn't even bother to fight back. It probably reminds you of The Simpsons when Homer was a boxer and his strategy was just to take hundreds of hits in the head to tire the other person out. That's exactly what happens here. Once Julius delivers so many punches until he's unable to hit him anymore, he offers Jason to take his best shot. Take your best shot. Following this, Jason delivers such an insanely strong punch that the guy's head goes flying across the roof. I'm pretty sure that I can show this because it's not graphic. I mean, it looks like a Halloween decoration. But the best part is, is that the man's head lands in the dumpster, which then slams shut. It's a mix of being messed up and violent, yet it looks so over the top that it's funny. And it's obviously intentional. I mean, the dumpster slamming shut, that wouldn't happen in real life. The only purpose of that is to make you laugh. Come on. Ghost Chat. I'm going to guess that none of you have watched this movie. This was one of the earliest horror films that was ever shown to me. I didn't watch it until much later, but I do remember seeing the first scene when I was very young and it's probably the highlight of the entire film. We open during an evening on a cruise ship in 1962. It seems like a pretty fun time and everyone's in a generally good mood. Well, everyone but a young girl. The guests are all dancing together to some live music, but it doesn't take long for something to go horribly wrong. A utility wire that is used for different things around the top deck has a ton of pressure put on it and ends up snapping. This leads to the wire being shot across the deck and for the next few seconds it quickly zips through the entire crowd. At first it's a little unclear what exactly happened as everyone just stands there frozen stiff and it's completely quiet but it doesn't take long for the first person to fall apart. It's revealed that everyone got sliced into two pieces by the wire. But as all the people collapsed onto the floor, it's revealed that the young girl was a little too short and ducked just in time. So the wire went over her head. But it looks like everyone else is dead. Being sliced clean in half has got to be up there with the worst punishments, especially when you consider the amount of people affected, as well as the fact that some of them are still alive. You can see people crawling around, moving their arms, trying to find their lower half, showing that they are fully aware of what's going on. And that moment where everyone is just dead silent before dropping onto the floor still gives me goosebumps. Vivarium this is probably my favorite category, the psychological punishments. These aren't necessarily graphic, but they're still really bad. And it's usually the stuff that happens in my nightmares. And this one is really odd. Vivarium starts off very much unlike any other horror film and follows a couple as they go looking for a new potential house to buy. They're convinced by a pretty creepy real estate agent to just look at an affordable option in a place called Yonder a neighborhood that is supposedly perfect for the suburban lifestyle. They go there, park in front of the house, and instantly it looks creepy. And I think that's quite an accomplishment, considering that it's the middle of the day. This is scary for the same reason the back rooms are. It's just off. And the sickly hospital green color of the houses doesn't help. So they don't want to live here, but they can just leave, right? Wrong. The real estate agent left while they were checking out the garden, and now they can't get out. I mean, they can leave the house and drive around, but this yonder neighborhood is infinitely big. It's like an endless amount of these houses are continuously copied in front of them. Even stranger is that no matter where they go, they always end up in front of the same house, number nine. 
Even after going into the same direction all day, they remain exactly where they started. Being trapped in a confined space is a lot of people's worst nightmare, and I think Vivarium did a pretty good job of taking that fear and applying it to a much larger scale. It's just so eerie that you are technically free to walk, yet are still trapped. And this maze is unbeatable, there's no way out, which makes it so hopeless and depressing. I mean, if you're one of the realtor guys who brought them here, in that case you're taught to navigate the space, but other than that, it's impossible. So those were some pretty twisted punishments. By the way, I know these aren't technically the worst ones. Some of you guys keep commenting for me to cover a Serbian film. Guys, I can't. YouTube is going to take my channel away if I cover movies like that too deeply, and I don't want to risk it. Anyways, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it and that I get to see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.